When I started researching this about three months ago, I never really got too much into the abduction scene, uh, only because just a whole lot of UFO stuff going on. Spending most of my career in law enforcement, I can tell you that through the National Crime uh, Reporting System, which is done by the FBI, every month, every crime that's committed, whether it's stealing somebody's bicycle or committing a murder, is reported by every police department, state, local, federal, in this country. Uh, these numbers may sound astounding, but I just checked them before I came here tonight to make sure that they were still up. In one year in the United States, there are approximately 250,000 people abducted or missing. In the world, 2.5 to 2.7 million people are abducted or missing. Now, to ease that number back, approximately 95% of these people are found. They are runaway children, which encompasses about 70% of that number, spousal abuse, the guy that wants to see that the grass is greener on the other side, murder, uh, ransom, and just outright foolishness. 30,000 of that number every year are never found, ever. No man, woman, child, 30,000 is the number that disappear off the face of the earth every year. I went back to 1990. It's a lot of people. A lot of men, women, and children. Um, some of the abduction cases that I've read are truly unbelievable. At the same time, fascinating. I'm going to talk tonight about one of the cases in Pennsylvania that is probably so strange that every time I read it, I come up with a different answer. My forte in law enforcement was homicide investigation. So uh, I know what I'm reading. <clears throat> in 2002, August 6th to be exact, a gentleman by the name of Todd Cease was abducted. And the headline read, Todd Cease was abducted and murdered by aliens on Montour Ridge in Northumberland County, Pennsylvania. Todd Cease, a 39-year-old white male, lived at the base of Montour Ridge in, Mon in uh, Northumberland County, married, father of two, two boys. Uh, got dressed one morning early and jumped on his ATV and decided he was going to take a ride up to Montour Ridge to spot early season deer. Told his wife he would be back by noon. Noon came and went, two o'clock, his wife notified the police department. Search team was organized immediately. Um, they found his four-wheeler at the top of the ridge. They had cadaver dogs and search dogs, state police, um, approximately 200 volunteers all together. They had uh, divers go into the pond on his, on his property, dive the pond, search the bottom of the pond. The uh, pond is located about 25 yards from the house. Um, the only thing they did find was one of Todd Cease's shoes about 78 feet in the air in a tree. Uh, police questioned, of course, people in the area, and it's kind of a rural farming community, so it's like, you know, a couple of living places where people really have real homes, and there's like six farms and a home. And uh, some farmers at a farm two miles away from the residence said that they saw what they believed to be a tube-shaped object above the tree line and power line, and a beam projecting down from it and something being lifted up into the craft. They couldn't describe what it was. Um, the search continued throughout the day. They searched six square miles of Montour Ridge. All they found was the ATV and Mr. Cease's one boot in the tree. They called it a night, started all over the next morning, and later on in the afternoon, in a thicket of bushes 25 yards away from the house at the pond, somebody sees something white. Now, these people have been marching past this site for almost two days. 
30 some hours. Nobody has seen anything in that area. But at this time, they see something white. Firemen, of course, start digging into it. It's a very heavy brush. They've got to cut into it with axes and power tools. And they finally find Todd Cease. Todd Cease is in his underwear. He is pale white. He's emaciated. Remember, this takes place in August. Had he been out there for the time of death, which the coroner ruled at 36 hours, he would have been bloated beyond belief. There was no liver mortis, no rigor mortis on the body, nothing but a few scratches from the bramble bushes in which he was entangled. Three feet away from his body was that of a dead rattlesnake, same time of death. Uh, Mr. Cease was not bitten by the rattlesnake. The body was described by people at the scene as his hands were up like this, and he had a look of horror on his face. He also had one inch and a half or one centimeter burn mark on his left temple. The body was removed without a coroner on the scene. Pennsylvania law requires that if your head is laying over there and your body is laying over there, I as a police officer cannot pronounce you dead. I have to have a coroner. That is law. Nobody can pronounce you dead but a coroner, no matter how many pieces you came in. The body was removed uh, to uh, Fort Indian Town Gap. Nobody from the family was allowed to view the body, and nobody viewed the body even after, before it was interred. Point Township has about a six-man police department. Their statement after all this took place was that Todd Cease's um, information on how he died would be forthcoming in about six to eight weeks, and that's when the people could have the body back, the family. Toxicology had to take place. They wanted to know what was in the blood, what happened. Was there any foul play, which they kind of ruled out. Seven and a half weeks later, the toxicology results come back. Todd Cease died of a cocaine overdose. I've seen a lot of cocaine overdoses. Never seen one where the guy threw his shoe up in a tree and there were no footprints around his vehicle, like when he got off his vehicle to wherever he went. There was always a coroner on the scene. So with all that in mind, we try to Freedom of Information Act report request from the police department. We were told it's still an open case. My question to the sergeant that day was, if it's still an open case, why did you say that he died of a cocaine overdose? Isn't that the cause of death? Yes, he replied. I said, if that's the cause of death, then the case is closed. No, it's not. And then he threatened to have me arrested for harassment. Good luck. The Todd C's case with Pennsylvania MUFON is an open case. Uh, myself and another investigator from another group are looking into the case as best we can, and we try to keep up with the police as best we can. Do I think he died of a cocaine overdose? Nah. Not even close. Cocaine overdose doesn't leave a burn mark on your temple. Cocaine overdose does not make you disappear for 36 to 40 hours. And I find it very hard to believe that 200 searchers with dogs and cadaver dogs walked past this body for two days and didn't see it. So is this one of our abductees? Now the dark side. <laughs> 